Okay, you're calling the uh, subcommittee to order. Let's take a, a roll call. And uh, just to get that for the record, um, I think we have uh, Julie Olbert uh, from the board, uh, uh, Nellie Marvel from the board. Um, can't see any others. Okay, from the subcommittee itself, we have uh, um, Mark Levine. Yes. We have Tim Wessel. Here. Um, anybody else from the uh, from the subcommittee? No, we have an expert here today yeah. from the Department of Health, David Englander. He's invited guest, yes, David Englander. Um, David Schur. From the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. Yep. Uh, we have uh, from NACB, of course, Gina, um, myself, Mark Gorman. Um, have we missed anybody who's in attendance? Do we have any public uh, members, uh, Julie? There are no members of the public here yet. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like that's, um, and that's what we have. Um, okay, we, first order of business, we really should take a look at the public comments and um, sort of summarize them for the record. Uh, and uh, first one on the, which is on the screen, so hopefully everybody's on the call is uh, able to take a look at that. Uh, points out that from Kate, Kate Nugent, uh, points out that Canada released their cannabis uh, warning labels uh, which she believes will be effective and ethical based on um, the obligation to protect the public health, especially that of minors. Um, the, uh, as I understand it, this is what she writes next is, is uh, what the cannabis rules say, um, what the cannabis warning is. Uh, this is a cannabis product and has not been analyzed. Now that's ours for the Food and Drug Administration. And this is what she would like it to read. Okay, well, that, I mean, she's she was reading, she was um, noting our own. All right, Canada is released there, sorry. All right, she would, like, she would like the language to say this is a cannabis product and has not been analyzed or approved by the Food and Drug Administration for sale to individuals 21 years of age or older only, or to registered qualifying patients only. In bold, keep this product away from children, do not use if pregnant or breastfeeding. The cannabis, the effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more, and I think we had modified that ourselves at our last meeting to say the effects of edible cannabis may be delayed by two or more hours. Um, cannabis can impair motivation, that's an additional word, concentration, coordination, and judgment, her additional language, and can cause, cause mental health diseases, including anxiety, schizophrenia, and suicidal, suicidal, never seen the word written that way so anyways suicide in people with no previous history of these diseases and would like us to include something about it being habit forming state law forbids driving operating machinery under the influence of this product if accidental ingestion or over serving occurs call the national poison center um, Okay, well that uh, broadens out the language that we had, but is um, not far off it, in, in my view. Uh, received from, uh, uh, which one are we doing next? Was that Kate? All right, from uh, Laura uh, Sherabom. Uh, she, I believe, is appealing to the Vermont Department of Health to develop sooner rather than later. 
uh, an evidence-based public health message campaign on cannabis intoxica intoxication and driving the effect of uh, and prevalence of high potency cannabis and educating families on youth mental health trauma and cannabis use that's a that covers a lot of different uh, issues there uh, she wants us to ensure local municipalities have adequate resources uh, for public safety and law enforcement training um, more narrowly she wants us to more narrowly define the scope of substance misuse prevention programming and create a clear financial mechanism through which it receives funding, such as competitive grant programs um, uh, through local prevention organizations. Uh, she proposes number four, limiting the density of cannabis retail establishments allowed within a municipality. Uh, she proposes requiring a buffer zone for cannabis retail establishments to keep uh, keep it away from places where youth learn and play. Uh, closely monitor uh, advertising and packaging uh, for cannabis retail establishments to assure they're not appealing to children and youth. Um, also prohibiting advertising in any locality where youth could be exposed and create a research and evaluation division for cannabis regulation that conducts public facing data collection and reporting to monitor uh, and respond to the impacts of retail cannabis, including impacts on historically marginalized groups. That's, uh, that's the substance of her, um, of her proposal. Christina Plazic sends a comment um, which reads, uh, limiting uh, the density of cannabis retail establishments allowed within a municipality, uh, requiring a buffer zone. Okay, we've been hearing that. Uh, closely monitoring advertising and packaging of cannabis uh, to ensure they are not appealing to children. Creating a research and evaluation division for the cannabis regulation that uh, conducts public facing data collection reporting to monitor and um, respond to the impacts of cannabis retail uh, and ensuring product labeling is informative and based on current science for example warning um, that cannabis may cause impaired driving addiction psychosis suicide attempt or injurious behavior uncontrollable vomiting Harm to fetus or nursing baby. This can occur in individuals with no previous history of psychosis or mental illness. Um, is there one more uh, at least? Okay. This was received by a um, person named Dare Chamings. Limit the density of cannabis retail establishments allowed within a municipality um, require buffer zones to keep uh, cannabis away from where youth learn and play such as youth centers uh, child care centers playgrounds um, closely monitor advertising and packaging for cannabis retail establishments um, creating research and evaluation uh, for cannabis regulation that conducts public facing data collection and so forth. And uh, the same warning, cannabis with THC may cause impaired driving and several other uh, previously uh, noted um, uh, effects. I believe, I believe we, someone submitted a public comment today? Yeah, I received a, a public comment this morning um, from uh, Jessa Berard and Jill sudhoff Guerin of the Vermont Medical Society, Stephanie Winters um, of the American uh, Academy of Pedi Pediatrics Vermont chapter and the Vermont Psychiatric Association. Um, rather than going through this, this particular comment because it is a letter to the board, but I will, um, and it's, it's uh, lengthy and it, it does reiterate some of the things that we've already heard in public comment. Um, I will though, it will go up on our website, I'll, so I'll send it to Nellie. 
and um, I will also send it to the subcommittee members so that you have this. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Julie. Um, there had been another uh, G that I had noticed when I was scanning through the, which uh, was an endorsement of uh, Tim Wessel's uh, concern uh, that the committees, I mean, that the, the resources be provided to municipal uh, governments to deal with some of the uh, uh, effects and costs of, of uh, law enforcement and so forth. So, um, but I didn't see that come up on a slide yet. And I know you hardly had time to, to do that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that was on this one or compliance enforcement. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions regarding the, uh, the public comments? Great. Uh, one of our leftover. Uh, um, I, I just see David's hand up um, before we go on okay. to approval of meeting. The and, and so I, I, if I may, I may ask a question at this point. Is that okay? Of course, David. Yes. Right. And I apologize. My, my hand is actually has been up from the beginning, so I have two quick questions. Just, just and I apologize if you could orient me very briefly. This is a, this is a subcommittee of the this is a subcommittee of the advisory committee to the cannabis control board. Is that correct? Correct. So I was I was struck by the fact that this that this PowerPoint is um, is branded as from the National Association of Cannabis Businesses. So the very first we're, the we're the consultants for the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. I'm sorry. We're the consultants for the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. I see. Okay. And we will go um, through the PowerPoint presentation based on what we've heard um, from public comments, what we know about the industry to gather what is the best recommendations for the state of Vermont. Sure. Um, so what was the, what was the means of, of public comment? So I received this, the, the document through the commissioner. What was the, what, what was the, the, the means of distribution and notice? Um, to submit public comments, all they have to do is go to the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. Um, this is the link right there um, in order to submit any comments that they would like to, or they can appear in person at any subcommittee um, to have their public comments on record. What we do is allow for a summary to be presented to the subcommittees and then they will also receive via email the entirety of the public comments. What was, what was, the, what was the means of public notice? Can I jump in, Julia? Yeah, they're not, these aren't um, necessarily public comments that are specific to something that we've released. This is just, we have a form on our website that anyone at any time can submit public comment just like they might in a, at the end of a meeting or, or so forth. So they're, they aren't necessarily specifically warned or specific to a particular document that we've released. It's, it's in any, any submission of public comment to the board. I, that really helps. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, David. We left off uh, our, our last meeting without uh, uh, approving the October minutes, meeting minutes, and uh, those have been circulated uh, to the subcommittee members. And uh, so we had October 4, 14, and, uh, and just, um, I think, uh, two days ago had uh, circulated the October 18, in other words, the minutes of our last full meeting uh, on Monday. Uh, it has have the uh, Subcommittee members had a chance to take a look at those, and and can we have a motion to uh, to approve uh, minutes of October four? Mark, can I interrupt? Can we do them all together, Julie? Well, you can, but I don't. So typically, folks don't approve minutes if they weren't in the meeting, and if I um, I suspect that we had different combinations of the folks that are here today in those meetings, so. 
I mean, they, well, sometimes people do approve minutes that, that for meetings that they haven't been in, but if someone's not comfortable doing that, we may have to hold on these and approve them maybe before an advisory committee meeting in the future. Okay, each of the, uh, each of these um, meetings had a quorum, uh, okay. but I can't say that they're all the same people. Right. Uh, uh, so it was Ingrid, so for October 4th, it was Ingrid and Tim, so Ingrid's not on this call. Um, and then for the 14th, it was, it was Dr. Uh, Levine and Ingrid. So we will have to wait for Ingrid. Um, and, and that's the same for uh, the 18th, the Gina, it was just Ingrid and uh, It was Dr. Ingrid and, and Dr. Levine. Okay. Good point, Julie. Sorry, I didn't quite. So we're holding off. Maybe Ingrid will be joining us um, later. Sorry, I think Tim was trying well, to. I'm sorry, Tim. Do you want to just pass the October fourth minutes, if if that makes you comfortable? Because I I think I was there for October fourth. Uh, but Ingrid is not on the call, and Dr. Levine was not on the October fourth um, meeting. Okay, well maybe we can handle that before this brief meeting is over. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will move on to manufacturing of edibles. Um, this is the last point we actually have to make as a committee. Um, so really excited um, to do this. I'm so glad that David, you're here um, to review our recommendations. So for the manufacturing of edibles, any company producing edibles must adhere to the Vermont Food Safety State requirements and regulations. All employees must have food handling training. Um, lab testing must occur. Um, the test for that will be determined by the lab subcommittee. Um, they need to have standards for distribution and transport, which we will lead to the compliance and enforcement for those standards. Um, packaging and labeling, as we've said, they need to have a nutritional label, um, the warning language and symbol, along with the point of sales flyer. And the regulatory body will be determined by the Vermont Cannabis Control Board as we're looking into who can best fit and serve um, edibles, you know, with THC, it makes it just a bit harder um, due to federal um, schedule one issues around this product. Tim, um, how do you feel about those recommendations? Uh, they seem fine to me, it really only, um definitely the food handling training and uh, sorry this thing keeps going down on me it's my version um, and I, as far as this subcommittee the packaging and labeling was sort of our wheelhouse but every, everything else is sort of different subcommittees am I correct yeah so um we would need a compliance and enforcement for distrib um, distribution and transport and then uh, lab testing as well. So so thank you for that. Um, Dr. Levine, your thoughts? Yeah, the way that packaging and labeling is framed, it looks fine. Um, my concern about the October 18th minutes is there was a line in there regarding the Department of Health involvement in the regulatory portion, which um, we're here to discuss today. Um, for sure, uh, but at the same time, the way you've framed it here um, is rather vague. Uh, so I guess that's fine, as long as it doesn't say what the version of the minutes that I reviewed said, which was that that would be the Department of Health. Um, Dr. Levine, it's a very good point that you're making. At that time, we thought that it would be put onto the Department of Health to oversee the manufacturing of edibles. 
and we did discuss that with Ingrid because that we at that time thought it was going to be the regulatory body and that I think is why David is on today as we have found out that there are might be some issues with having the Department of Health overseeing manufacturing of edibles due to federal funding that they receive and also expertise in that area which is why Vermont Cannabis Control Board has there lots of work to look over to really determine what the best regulatory body will be. Um, so those minutes are correct, but we are stating for this phone call that that is no longer the case um, and we have to determine which would be the best regulatory body. And with that being said, David, I would love um, for your thoughts on this and maybe your thoughts on who might be a really good regulatory body um, to oversee the manufacturing of edible. Uh, so, so thank you. Um, uh, Julie and I spoke about this briefly and, and just to tell one for other folks that, so the Department of Health has a, we have food safety folks, folks who work on, on sanitation, which is things like keeping food at the correct temperature, having hand washing statements, uh, stations, and, and that sort of thing. We don't have any expertise in cannabis um, and there's great concern among our food logic folks about getting involved. And, and principally, one of the issues is that we are funded by FDA to do those inspections, and, and they will not allow us to do inspections for cannabis. Um, in, in, in terms of who is the appropriate regulatory body, I'm, I'm loath to, to put it on to somebody else, um, as, as we don't like it when it happens to us. Um, I think Julie and I maybe had a, and Julie, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think we had a very, very, very preliminary discussion yesterday about maybe it makes sense for the, for the board itself to have uh, to have trained inspectors and adopt regulations that are specific to animals um, that could incorporate um, uh, the, 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 the safety regulations. So the Department of Health has many different license categories. There's food manufacturing and then there's also food serving. And there's, depending who you are, different, uh, different criteria would attach. So the, the most straightforward way I can think of, again, I don't want to put this on somebody else, would be for the board itself to do it and we could help you craft a regulation and also provide you with, you know, the, 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 the training that would be, we could provide training. We could say, these are the kinds of training our sanitarians use in order to not become qualified. So to, just to jump in, well, David, yes, I think that's what we, we talked about. And I, my other thought is, um, I think we need, as a board, to get a little further in our rule writing in order to understand exactly what it is we we need or want to have regulated. Um, that was the other thing that, that I was thinking. Um, thank you, David, for your comments. I know in other states, they sometimes allow this to be oversight by the, their cannabis control board or the Department of Health. Um, so a combination of both, at least giving some criteria and regulations um, to the Vermont Cannabis Control Board is, is definitely something that we, we have seen in other states. So I just would like for the record, um, Tim, to vote on the manufacturing of edibles based on the points that we have just made. Is that a yes or no? Any company must be here to Vermont food safety state regulations and requirements that all employees must have food handling training. Um, there needs to be laboratory testing, um, standards for distribution and transport and manufacturing and labeling. And that's the Vermont Cannabis Control Board will determine who will be overseeing um, the manufacturing of edibles. Uh, seems reasonable to me with my limited experience. Is that a uh, yes, Tim? Well, I didn't, I didn't hear a vote uh, being taken. Who's voting in this situation? Um, so you would be voting and Dr. Levine will be voting on what we have so far for the manufacturing of edibles. Okay, I, I don't think that's like an actual vote of a quorum, is it? Yes, um, 
as there are only three committee members. So I would have you vote and Dr. Libby vote for these. Okay, well, I can vote yes on that. Thank you, Tim. And Dr. Levine? I can vote yes. Uh, the only question I have that we should make sure we answer as best we can is, is there anything that is left out of the slide? I have no problem with what's on the slide, mm -hmm. but is there anything we haven't thought of that should be uh, of interest? And I, I'm scratching my head just to be sure. Um, there's nothing that I um, know about. If there is anything that you would like to add, I think right now we can keep it as this, and then there will be an advisory board meeting where everyone, um, all the subcommittee groups will come together um, to discuss what requirements have been created for public health and if there is something that you feel that was left off, you can bring it up at that meeting. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds fine. And I assume the, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name who spoke to us from UVM. Um, much of this oh, comes from, um, thank you. Much of this comes from that presentation as well. And you'll, you'll notice that at least three of those bullet points are open-ended as to what needs to be determined. So, you know, there's plenty of flexibility in, in most cases. Yeah. Um, well, thank you both. Just for the record, we have um, two yeses for the manufacturing of edibles. Um, and obviously a lot need, more needs to be created on what that actually will look like. But I think that this is a real good starting ground um, to determine that, you know, lab standards need to be created for this. Um, what we're going to do for distribution and transport and this committee has already made statements about packaging and labeling are there any public co comments anyone in the room there are no members of the public okay thank you is there anything else that you would like to discuss anyone on, on this call about anything that we've, we've spoken about dr levine i see you shaking your head yes uh in addition to the valuable input david englander has provided thus far i do think there were some and we appreciate the um, danica's and mark's review of um, what the health department submitted to the subcommittee uh, but I do think there may still be some unanswered questions that uh, we had posed that might require us to draw, portray that document again on the screen and take advantage of the fact that David's with us today. Wonderful. And so David, the next two slides are what we, re what we have received from the at three slides on um, Department of Health. Um, this is the first one about warning language, which is what we had at the last meeting. I'll let you take it from here. You're David, mute. you're on mute. I know, I was saying I was on mute. Um, uh, <laughs> so we just, we added, we added a, a few elements. Um, we, I'm just, I'm just grabbing, I'm just grabbing my notes. Um, we had a few elements which referred to, which added, um, uh, and pet, I don't, a little difficult um, for, for folks who aren't looking at, at this document. Um, so in the, in the all caps line for children, we, we added, and pets, because there have been poisoning of, of pets, um, we added a line following the breastfeeding possession or use of this product may carry significant legal penalties. That is something that we added for, for um, people's understanding. And then we added the, the last sentence of the first paragraph, uh, persons 25 younger may be more likely to experience harm to the developing brain, which actually does, I mean, I think that captures some of the concerns raised in, in at least one of the, with the public comments. Yes, um, you, you definitely did capture the public's concerns. Um, I think that this is really well drafted. 
Tim, I know you weren't on last meeting. Do you have any questions or about this launch? No, I think it's good. I, I, I like the way it um, sort of goes between bold and bolded caps. It kind of uh, helps to uh, differentiate um, both seriousness and kind of like helps you move to the important parts and see the different sections. So it's kind of a nice balance between, uh, I know we were considering bullet points at one, one point, but that gets really difficult when it comes to smaller packaging. So it's good to me. Yeah, good, good point, Tim. And so uh, David, I just want to let you know, we did make one edit um, to this before we voted, and that was just about um, the effects of edible cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more. So we included the word edible and we also bolded this line because that's a very important statement. Um, other than that, I think, you know, the subcommittee was very, very pleased with this. So thank you so much for your, your help on revising um, the warning labels that we had created. Terrific, and, and, and this, is, this is nicely crafted too because there's, I think it's in Michigan, it, that line looks like a how to. It looks like it looks like an instruction of how to imbibe it as opposed to being part of a warning. So this is nicely, nicely phrased. Okay, thank you so much. And I'll move to the other side about just um, you know, font sizing and also additional um, bolding that needs to be on product packaging. David, um, would you like to go through this slide for everyone? Um, I don't know that I have much. To, I think that the slide speaks to it for itself. I'm not sure that mm -hmm. I've been added uh, to know it by itself. Mm -hmm. And Tim, your thoughts? I know you um, weren't on last call, so you know, just making sure that it's bolded and that there's at least a 10-point font um, with, with um, in order to ensure that all these products have the same thing. I think it's really important. I know we were saying about, you know, what is the font that we are going to require so that it is captured by the eye. I think bolding and capitalizing everything as well is really gets that eye drawn um, and creates quite a big attention grabber for people. Yeah, it seems fine. Um, I did notice that so the pets wasn't going to be added to that particular uh, requirement, right? I know the pets got added to the last. Um, no, D just these two, keep out of reach of children and if it includes multiple servings, which I think is so very important because sometimes people will take an entire bar of chocolate not realizing that they're multiple servings. So highlighting that as much as possible um, is the number one uh, most important thing, you know, because of people really taking too much and having adverse reactions than they would actually want. Sure, sure. Looks good. Um, and then we are on to the warning size. I know w as a committee, a lot of people were saying they like the yellow with the red outside. Um, but this one is also, as we were stating earlier that we had concerns if a package had a yellow background that this might not be viewed as much or depending on the color of the background. And I know that the Department of Health was saying we can utilize both. So this can be used interchangeably with a white background um, so that it appears um, and would be more reflective on, on certain packaging. So I'll hand that off to you, David. Um. I, I think I had some I had some questions of, of, about some of the language that was used, but I don't think we need to take up the, the, the subcommittee's time with that. I think again, I think the sort of I don't think we made substantive comments on the. I mean, this, this all looks good. I did have I had some technical questions just for my understanding. And I think. Um, well, had, what were those questions, David? That'd be happy to have an open conversation about that now. Well, I just don't want to take up the committee's time for, you know, to make you my ignorance. Uh, um, so, 
So I had I had a question about uh, well, so one one thing that it did say um, that that I mean is. Um, I, I'm sorry, David. I couldn't hear you. Can everybody make sure to close their mics unless they're speaking? David, I'm sorry. Um, can you repeat that? That's okay. I'm just impressed that somebody seemed to be on a speedway at the same time they were on this call. Um, I, it's important that we not make references to other states to say things like guidelines. I'm not sure with, with how far this was intended to go, but there was originally a line that said guidelines are the same as Maine. That might be informational. But I just want to make sure that we're doing something that's Vermont specific that we aren't we are tying ourselves to other states' requirements, if anything, because as as the board goes through rulemaking, that's something that the legislative committee would say you are not allowed to pin our regulations to a, to, to somebody other than the federal government, um, because because therefore their legislators can change Vermont law, and so that's something that is not viewed as, as legal. Um, so that was just one. Uh, one, one comment really about more about process than anything else. Um, I, I asked a question, it refers to a marketing layer, and I asked, again, in my deep and body ignorance, is a marketing layer distinct from an on product? Are they, is that a well known concept? Is it different from plastic wrapping versus a box, or box versus the product itself? So I, I was just trying to understand sort of what those terms meant. Mm. Um, where do you see marketing label? Uh, I think because what I know um, that statement wasn't made by me. I believe it was made by Danica in context of um, the white background from a marketing perspective. Just if it is on something, it stands out more. So I think that the comment was just marketability of being able to visually see the logo. Um, than actual um, production of a product. Yeah, so that, that's right. So that the word used is under required colors when used on a mark on the marketing layer. So I just didn't know what that meant. You see right? Um, yeah. So I think it's just the uh, the marketing layer is meaning on top of the packaging. Great. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and when you refer to Maine, we did show different warning symbols um, in order for people to get different viewpoints of what are being done in other states. There are some states that just say, you know, this contains THC and then has a THC um, language onto that. And we did do a comparison with Maine as well because it's really important um, to have standard symbols that can be recognized anywhere because we do believe that there will be a hot, large amount of tourists to Vermont, especially from neighboring states. Um, and so if there would be a similar consistency, people would be able to recognize that symbol. Um, I know that there have been strides in the cannabis industry to get one universal symbol um, for all of the different states. So no matter where you go to, um, it would be able to be recognized. And then especially when it's federally legal, that due to interstate commerce and products being able to be sold um, in different states, it would be very important to have a universal symbol so that everybody knows what it looks like. Um, uh, and, and that's just for the future. Um, but I think that that's what that comment was made out of. And I believe this is very similar. Um, this is what Maine is doing but we did consider this to be the best for the state of Vermont. And this conversation went on for a very long time. So I think we did our due diligence to ensure that this was the, the best and also adhering um, to colors and sizes as well. Any comments about this from the rest of the subcommittee or anything to add to the questions that David has raised? We even refined the leaf it yeah, so looks like a maple leaf from vermont on a cannabis yeah so thank you david and dr will be very good point um this has been very very thought out and i mean i believe the subcommittee did a really fantastic job in ensuring 
that people would understand that this is a cannabis THC product. Any other comments or questions? Um, David, I know that you have made, is there anything else that you would like to add from the Department of Health perspective for the subcommittee or the public that um, will be reviewing this recording? Uh, like, you know, this slide or generally speaking? Uh, just generally speaking, uh, those are the only three slides that we have added um, for the Department of Health because I know, unfortunately, you were not able to attain, um, to attend Monday's call. Right, so I, I did, um, so I was provided a, a copy with, as I mentioned, um, the, the memo, the notice regarding the promotion of commercial cannabis. I did provide a number of questions and comments to Julie, and, and, and I think my understanding from our conversation, Julie, was that this should be something that, that some, of, some of the issues I've raised will be rightfully dispensed and ignored because that's, you know, fine and, and then other things that the board will have to take up. So I guess my, my, my comments on the document are, are, are memorialized in, in the document itself and, and, that, and that Julie has in her possession. Yes, that, that's, that's accurate. This committee in their last meeting only went over the things that changed the particular slides that you're looking at and the rest of the comments have come to me. Gina, I hate to do this, but I, I made the mistake of uh, believing you when you said 11.30 adjournment. So I really, I, I have a- I, I think that we're okay right now. Actually, if no one has any other comments or questions, I, uh, you know, we were hit at the last minute with public comments, but I always think it's really important to include them and allow everybody's voice to be heard, um, especially for this, this um, small subcommittee and just for the record. So I am happy to, um, motion to adjourn. Yeah, before we do that, I, I do believe we should uh, seriously look at the comments that came in, uh, reflect on them, uh, and the most recent one that Julie sent us this morning from uh, the medical community. Not that I'm advocating we do everything everybody said, but also try to balance pragmatism and uh, feasibility with what's on a label with any of the suggestions that were made just so that we can say we've addressed them but also if there are some that merit being squeezed in if I could use that term um, that we do due diligence um, just because we have we I don't know why you uh, you know we don't we don't ever have to listen to public comment uh, but again, if it's invited in, uh, I think we need to reflect on it. I agree, Dr. Levine. And, um, you know, all of these public comments in its entirety will be sent to all the subcommittee members. And, you know, I think we should address that and bring that up if there are any concerns after reading that on the entire advisory board meeting. Okay. I'm willing to make a motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you, Dr. Levine. Will anyone second that? I will. Thank you so much. Um, thank you both. I just want to say from, you know, NACB, from Danica and Marks, um, and myself that we've just had such a wonderful time meeting with you. Thank you for all your hard work and determination. I know that there were lots of meetings were really, you know, short deadlines and it, it's just been incredible to work and I think you've done a fantastic job in representing Vermont and making sure that, you know, people are safe. So thank you so much and thank you, Julie. I know you've really helped us in all of this, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Julie. You know, I recognize add? that our work is not necessarily done, but this is just a pausing moment so that we can start writing rules and making some decisions and that there will be more to discuss. Yeah, you know, it's been an honor, as uh, Gina has said, to be able to work with you. And, and thanks, Julie, for your constant presence and, and guidance. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Levine, Tim, Ingrid, uh, you know, we've been there almost almost every week, twice a week. And you, David, for joining us in this last meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.